What do you get when you cross a supercapacitor with a battery? It's not the start of a bad engineering joke, it's the birth of a quirky little powerhouse with some serious credential. Introducing a new kind of battery chemistry that's got it all. High drive output, low leakage, high capacity, and a stable personality that you can count on. In fact, it's so safe that you can stab or crush it. This battery is made from lithium titanate oxide, but those in the know call it an LTO. To get to the lowdown, we're having a chat with Klaas from Michicon, the company behind bringing LTO batteries into the mainstream. Are these cells actually worth the price tag, or are they just some new chemistry with a fancy acronym? Klaas, thank you so much for joining us. Why did I just refer to this as some sort of a middleman between, or, or a middle ground between a supercapacitor and a battery? Why would I say something like that? Yeah, Elliot, thanks for having me. So uh, that is right. Uh, this new technology of Nichicon is really there to fill the gap between supercapacitors and lithium ion batteries. So it comes with all the great advantages like you're used to have from supercapacitors, but with substantially more energy density. Amazing. Okay. Let's talk about advantages, disadvantages of this battery. Let's go straight into advantages. Why would someone want to use a lithium titanate oxide battery over, for instance, a lithium ion? Well, you're used to see batteries as something not reliable out on the market uh, without specification, without proper data for what you can expect from the battery, also not lifetime lasting for long. Our battery is different. So this is something that you put out in the field for 10 or 15 years. It continues to work and work and it's going to do the job and, and keep your customers uh, uh, satisfied with your products. Amazing. Any disadvantages of using a battery of this type? Cost? Well, obviously it, it is there to fill the gap between supercapacitors and lithium ion batteries. That means that you have, at least on the paper, you have substantially lower uh, capacity than a lithium ion battery. But you need to remember that in many cases, you wouldn't necessarily need that large capacitance value. Many times that is designed in to be able to withstand high discharge pulses when energy is needed because of limitations in C-rates. And uh, our battery technology is very different. So even very small batteries, this is the current mass production lineup, like the small one here in the middle that has a diameter of four millimeter and 25 millimeter length. It comes with a moderate capacitance specification of four milliampere hours, which doesn't sound much. And to many people, initially it could sound like that can't do the job for me, but you can discharge this battery and provide energy at short time for, for pulses of 400 milli. Uh, ampere, so uh, 100 times the, the capacitance. Wow, amazing. And that larger battery you've got there, would you hold that up at the screen? The largest battery you've got there, what sort of capacity is that having? That comes with a diameter of 12.5 millimeter, the length is 40 millimeter, and that has a specified capacitance of 150 milliamp. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about this. So we've got charging requirements. If we're talking about comparing this often to something like a lithium ion chemistry, with lithium ion, you need to have a complex charge profile. You have to have an IC just to make sure that you've got a constant current coming in at the start and a constant voltage to finish it off. Is it the same with the LTO battery? Uh, you know, we compare it to a supercapacitor. Is it as simple as filling up a capacitor? Or how does this work? How do we charge? Uh, first of all, it, it is batteries. It is not the same like a supercapacitor. So, but in terms of what, what you point out here, it is very easy to handle. So as always, you need to take care of what, what voltage you apply to, to the storage tech technology, but the current is not of an issue. So this product has such a low ESR that it won't heat up no matter the, the high current you, you try to charge it with. So it's very simple to charge and discharge. That's a good point. Amazing. Okay. So also comparing to lithium cells, let's talk about safety of this new battery technology. So lithium, you know, we had that issue back in the you know, late 2010s, where if you looked at your phone wrong, that lithium ion battery would expand and possibly explode. You know, there's still lithium in the name of lithium titanate oxide. Are these batteries inherently dangerous? No, they are not actually. So take a look at the, our website for the batteries, uh, nichiconbattery.com. And there are even clips there for what you can do with the battery. And it's absolutely safe. So you can poke through these batteries, you can cut them through. And we even have video clips on the website where you put them under fire and they remain safe. So it is a safe technology, despite the name of lithium. It's lithium titanate. Yes. And it's something really different there. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let's finish up and we'll ask about some applications of this. Where do you see an LTO battery thriving into the future? Well, a very good use case is anything that has to do with energy harvesting. So where you can refill energy into the battery from time to time, then you naturally do not need to have a very large energy storage. That's the right place for us to be. And that combined with some application that also needs to do wireless communication, which means high current discharge pulse from time to time. 
that's the right place to be because that's what we can handle despite a low capacitance specified we can handle uh, short discharge pulses of up to a rate of 100 times the capacitance so i would say that's the right place to be amazing so this sort of technology could be used to far extend the lifetime of batteries that are only operating off one primary cell at the moment say you have a communication system it's in deep sleep most of the time slowly draining a larger primary cell but if you were to quickly discharge that using a transmission event maybe a satellite comes over and you've got to get some data off that's when your battery would help to supplement that power and help to ensure that your main cell hasn't been damaged by a high current event that's right that's what our battery can do so you can extend the lifetime of a primary cell so by having energy always transferred from the primary cell over to our then secondary cell so you can use that to provide those current spikes to your system uh, to not damage the uh, the main battery that should keep you with energy stored for for years up in the field bloody brilliant thank you very much for your time class thanks so much for joining us today thank you very much elliot for having me I hope you'll learn something. If you want to evaluate this new chemistry, we'll have a link down below where you can apply to evaluate Nichicon's range of LTO batteries. Stay disruptive.